Hello, folks, and welcome to the Outdoors Radio Show, The Bend. I am your host, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck. As always, we love hearing from all of you. Comments, stories, ideas. Get a hold of us anytime. Call or text 305-900-BEND. That is 305-900-2363. Or drop an email to bendradioshow at gmail.com. Joining me, as always, is my producer, sound engineer, and co-host, Jeff Tigger Earhart. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I wish everybody could see him. He's sitting here waving his hand, smiling, kind of like a little kid. What the? What got you all perked up all of a sudden? I was going to try to get through the whole episode without saying a word, and I didn't last 50 seconds. Your nickname is Tigger. How or when have you ever been able to I sit be quietly quiet. and I not be, be bouncing off the wall? Although, I could be quiet if I wanted to. Although that's funny when, Tigger, you're the one that usually calls me 90 or nothing. So anyway, another week has gone by. And for those of you that watched the news, this last week has been the SHOT Show going out at on in Vegas. It wrapped up and that's always the big trade show where it brings out all of the new and exciting technology that's going to be released in the next coming year for those of us that are into sport shooting or say we're even into our optics, hunting, all of the neatest, latest Everything outdoors. Yes. Is, I is, should say everything outdoors, but well, just is. about. I There's mean, everything about from everything. camping equipment, like I said, optics. And we're not talking just optics. We're talking about even lenses for wildlife photography. It's always as exciting to be able to hear and see about what is going to be the new trends for this next coming year. So, you know, Tigger and I will be staying on top of all of that. What's that? So SHOT Show, that's not where we can go and purchase. It's to show items that are going to be available for retail, say, coming in the next year, right? Correct. It is okay. not open to the general public. That Then I would be safe there. Then I wouldn't be burning up. <laughs> I, what I would be doing is adding this to a wish list. It's not yes, like yes. I can go home with $86,000 worth of optics. No, you cannot. And, and even if you... I would, I would never let you have the checkbook anyway to I do would that. Be so you know that. I would that. <laughs> With that being said, also this last week, in case you missed it, last week we were giving a little bit on a previous show talking about avalanche safety. And it was a good thing we did because during the week here had been snowmobile safety week across the United States. Again, I'm going to, you know, maybe sound like a broken record, but please, if you are considering or planning any of these trips in the upcoming weeks here while the winter snow is at its best, please be vigilant be doing the buddy system, be extra safe. There's been a lot of casualties, sadly, over this winter season already in regards to a lot of our fun activities. So please just take that extra time and be safe, be prepared. Make sure you have a beacon on you as well as I said, letting somebody know that you are out and about. Just call mom and dad if nothing else and just say, mom and dad, I am going so to this place. And they'll say, have fun, and then call mom and dad when you get back. <laughs> and it's a, there you go. You, have, you let somebody know where you're going, and you talk to mom and dad. There That's you what have I have, it. the healer of relationship. <laughs> Starting out the news today, I think we're going to start with, you know what, let's head to Ohio first. The Ohio Senate recently honored members of the North Ridgeville High School Trap Team for their outstanding performance in 2022. Get this, the North Ridge High School Trap Team was founded only five years ago, and within that time frame, they have now had a nationally competing team comprised of 70 members who compete in a variety of shotgun sports, including trap, skeet, and sporting clays. Now, the reason for the Ohio Senate to honor this team is that first, yes, they were named an all-state champions, but also during the USA High School Clay Target Championships held in Michigan back earlier in 2022, this Ohio team had a National Ladies Trap Champion crowned. Another female also finished in the top 10. Then on the men's side had a team member tie for first place as the men's national trap champion. So congrats to the North Ridge High School Trap Team. Competitive high school trap teams are really catching on fire across the nation. And that's why I brought this story up. So if your schools are not offering such a program, I'm highly encouraging you to work with your local trap and sporting clay clubs to bring this to the educators and become involved yourselves. Now, we all know mark marksmanship. If you think about it, it requires tremendous mental focus, concentration, 
And think about this even further. These are key skills that will help us in the long run or help these students in the long run on this journey we call life. And those trap teams, they're uh, they're very common now in high school rodeo. Mm -hmm. That's gotten huge into the trap shooting, and trap shooting is big on college teams. And they're offering college scholarships. College scholarships on that, yeah. So this is this is legit. Your nephew is on a team. He's a heck of a shot. I thought that was pretty good. He's on his local trap team, and Mm -hmm. it is very young as well, and has just kind of gotten going. And they're legit. I mean, they have gotten really, really, really good. It's exciting. It really is. And if you think about it, this is truly one of those sports that is a lifelong sport. And that's what I love about it the most. Right, right. Now heading to North Dakota, angler Shane Johnson from Minot, North Dakota, appears to have notched his name in the history books. This month, while fishing off the Missouri River tail race below the Garrison Dam, Johnson had one strike the whole night, and it was one that will not be forgotten. He landed a burbot. A burbot that measured, get this, 41 and three quarter inches in length and on a certified scale weighed in at 19 pounds, five ounces. It is appearing indeed that his burbot will push out a record that has stood for nearly 40 years by beating the previous record being that of 18 pounds, four ounces. So he beat that old record by over a pound. Official certification of the new record is expected soon. Gotta say congratulations, Shane Johnson, on this exciting feat. And if you've not seen a burbot before, I'm looking at them. It's right now. worth a quick Google they, search, uh, isn't they, uh, it? I did. I just I just Googled this deal. I did yeah, I did the googly thing. They're kind of a They're definitely not something you see every day. No, no, they're not. <laughs> they call them a a, a freshwater ling, mm-hmm. a freshwater cod, a cusk. Mm-hmm. Uh, closely related to the common ling or the cusk. There you have it. Kind of a creepy little bugger. (laughs) Big bugger in this case. Now let's head to the Northeast. We're heading to Pennsylvania, where persistence paid off. Pennsylvania hunter Dave Kammerdiner has applied for an archery bull elk tag for 10 years. And this last fall was his turn. In September, on his 66th birthday, Dave Kammerdiner made a perfect 45-yard shot with his crossbow on what he thought was a monster non-typical bull. Fast forward to the middle of December now, and Dave had his trophy scored by an official Boone and Crockett score. This bull elk scored officially 446 inches. That's over 45 inches more than the current Pennsylvania non-typical archery record and is the second largest non-typical bull ever killed in Pennsylvania with any weapon. So I got to say a big old congratulations to Dave on that new state record. And when people break those records like that, is Mm -hmm. that the ones that are sought after to be displayed in various different sporting goods stores? Oh, absolutely. A lot absolutely. of times those people, they, they get honored in that. Is that right? Kind of, absolutely. That's how they get their mounts on the stores, too? Yes, okay. I'm sure he will be having some, we'll just put it out. I'm not going to name off names of some of these larger stores that we like to attend that have said mounts done and replicas made of it, but I'm sure he will be getting some offers very soon. Hashtag goals. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, stay where you are. When we come back, we have some more tips in order to get your 2023 in order and get those dreams that you have of going and traveling and adventuring actually on the books and attainable. Stay where you are. We'll be right back. The hunt is planned. The guide is booked. The trip is blocked off in the calendar. But one huge detail remains, preserving that trophy, creating a memory that will last a lifetime. Little Rack Taxidermy has that fast, friendly service to fulfill your taxidermy in a timely, professional manner. Reach out to Heather with Little Rack Taxidermy through Facebook at Little Rack Taxidermy or send an email to heatherjoe23 at hotmail.com. Little Rack Taxidermy, bringing back the natural look. Shooting ducks, skinning bucks, I'm a hunting princess in a pickup truck. This is Beck. First, I appreciate all of you for listening and making The Bend part of your week. Many of you have asked, how do I catch past episodes? The answer is super easy. Head to thebendshow.com and click on the shows tab. There you can listen to every episode all the way back to episode one. Podcasters, head to your favorite podcasting app and search The Bend. 
You'll find us. Be sure to follow and subscribe and never miss another episode again. Hey everybody, this is John Arman with Ultimate Outdoor Adventures TV. Join us every week as we travel the back roads and backwaters in search of the ultimate outdoor adventure. You can find us on KOTVchannel.com, YouTube, and our local stations. Want to add just a little bit of spice to your event, your customer appreciation supper, your banquet, your meeting? Oh, yeah. Well, bring in us, beckon your keynote speakers, hosts, MCs, a host couple. We'll make them laugh, even cry tears of joy. Call us today. Welcome back to the Outdoors Radio Show, The Bend. I am your host, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck. And joining me as my co-host is Jeff Tigger Earhart. Now, we're going to tackle a couple of different topics, and it all kind of goes around the idea of trips, making memories, things in that arena, but then also in order how to do so, hopefully without breaking the bank or being prepared for said trip that may come about or make that dream a reality and for those people that are looking at trips over gifts Mm -hmm. it's becoming more and more popular of making memories versus purchasing said tangible item correct so i'm going to kind of break this into two different areas and the first one is as you're looking at your calendar right now what's coming up the closest. What are the next holidays that are right around the bend? I'm I've say got it, that it way. written down. <laughs> I've got it. Valentine's Day and then uh, your birthday to follow. Yes, I'm picking up what you're throwing. I at. was thinking more. Yes, Valentine's Day. Thinking that the next longer weekend for kids is often President's Day weekend. And then after that is spring break. So I know those are all fast approaching, but and especially those ones that are Valentine's Day, they're very, very quickly approaching. I'm again repeating what he just said. Trips over gifts. Yes, he's got the hint. But what I'm saying is so you don't feel like you're overwhelmed, breaking the bank, any of those kinds of things. The idea is just to take that time that is so valuable and is irreplaceable. You can't buy time, but take the initiative and plan something instead of saying buying something because we all have enough stuff. We all do. We have lots of excess stuff that we don't necessarily need. However, how thoughtful is it if, say, one of your loved one plans maybe a special hike or maybe to go ice fishing or do an activity you've never done before, maybe check out some local hot springs or go for a little road trip to a hot springs destination. And it doesn't necessarily have to happen on the actual day of say a holiday or special occasion it just needs to maybe have it written down you know hand it to them in a nice card saying hey i have this plan for us to do x y or z and say you have kids and now you're thinking when am i gonna have the time to go check out the hot springs that i would love to go see i have kids and those kind of obstacles Think about this. Maybe you and your loved one could plan a special day during the week when the kids are in school. They don't need to know about it. Have grandma and grandpa look at. There you go. And you know, as we always say, Tigger, check in with each other and go and have that special day. That's kind of, you played hooky for the day. Think about it that way and went on your own little adventure. And I know there are a lot of people that they love to do the spontaneous thing. Mm -hmm. And and that's great. If people Mm -hmm. like to do that and if that works for you, that is That's great, but for a lot of us that live at the end of dirt roads, that doesn't work. We don't have the option to be able to just instantaneously jump in the vehicle and go somewhere. Uh, Prices have gone up for every single one of us, so a lot of us don't have that discretionary income that it requires a lot of times to jump in said truck to go someplace. So Mm -hmm. we have found it, it's a little, in our situation anyway, is we have put together a little plan. And it's an action plan that we can stick to and works for us to be able to figure out where we want to go and actually being able to follow it through, right? Because if we don't, we can always come up with excuses of why we can't go. But we can always always keep saying those wishes and dreams such as, I would love to go hunting X, Y, or Z in this location. I want to go to Europe. But in order to make them all a reality, just like Tigger said, you kind of had to have some steps. You got to kind of have a little bit of guidelines in order to make them, you know, what we want to call it, more stress-free. And it makes you accountable. Yeah. It holds you to your goals. It puts long-term and short-term goals together, makes you accountable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what we need to do first off, I always say is answer those questions, where, when, how. 
I know they're hard questions, but we're going to break them down for you. And the reason why I'm bringing this up isn't just for, say, you wanting to go and hike Zion National Park or something like that. I'm also bringing it up because I know a lot of you are starting to plan your hunts for next fall, especially if they're the big game hunts. And it's important to start looking at all of that now because you'll soon be having to apply for said licenses. So first off, you need to decide where you want to go. That's step number one. So write down all the different places you're thinking you'd like to visit in 2023 and then go through them with, say, your friends, family, spouse, anybody who you might be traveling with. Or if you're not traveling with anybody, that's okay too. Just scratch them off real quickly and determine what is actually attainable. Well, that will mentally get you in focus and realizing of, hey, I can actually do X, Y, or Z, or maybe I need to pull back a little bit. Maybe I'm being a little overzealous, but you can kind of actually start to put into mind and see your next year ahead of you start to fall into place. So once you've decided on where you're heading, you're going to want to decide how long you're going. Is it a week? Is it a month? Is it a couple of days? Is it a road trip just down the road? All of those are important in order to decide how much this is going to cost, right? Tigger, I mean, as we say, for example, if you're going to go, say, elk hunting in some of these states, non-resident tags alone can cost you $900 and up. Well, you need to be realistic. I mean, about what you're doing with this, because I've seen it happen one of two ways. Some people don't set their goals high enough, Mm -hmm. and then uh, then it's a letdown, and then it's the other way. People set those little vacations or what they want to do so darn high that it is so obtainable. And all it does is leaves people with broken hearts yes. and disappointment. And the whole purpose is to create a memory of trips versus gifts, something yes. that will last a lifetime, right? Exactly. So set it up for success that everybody that's involved with said trip is successful. So there you go. You know where you're going. Research your costs after you've decided where your trip is going to be or about how the length of your trip is going to be. And then lastly, you need to start saving the dollars now. And I'm saying it now because believe me, as Tigger just said, you don't want that stress when the trip is only a week or two away and you realize all of a sudden, oh my gosh, it's going to cost an extra X, Y, or Z. We'll pay for it later. And then you're dealing with the stress of how are you going to pay for it later when the credit card statement shows up. Or you're on the middle of your trip and you're saying, oh shoot, I hadn't planned for X, Y, or Z. Exactly. I didn't think this would happen. So here's an idea just to kind of give you an idea of how to start budgeting very simply is, uh, for example, this is just approximately, say about eight months from now, you want to take a trip and you've calculated it out between length and destination and all of that. It's going to cost you, we'll say an easy $2,000. We'll keep the numbers very easy. Well, you would need to start putting away eight and a half dollars a day starting right now in order to hit close to that $2,000 mark. So think about it. We have a lot of extra things we sometimes buy during the day. Maybe not buy that extra coffee save on the donut, maybe put you don't that need cash to upgrade in the envelope. That, that streaming <laughs> service, maybe you don't mm-hmm. need that one now. That's a way to save money. So there you go. Just a few ideas to start making that trip or trips this coming year a little bit more attainable and so that they're a lot more enjoyable. Up next, we have a story you just don't hear about every day. Stay where you are. We'll be right back. Pro Rodeo fans, watch the Cowboy Channel anytime, anywhere with PRCA on the Cowboy Channel Plus. Live stream the Cowboy Channel or watch your favorite PRCA rodeos on demand. Classic PRCA rodeos added weekly. Get the PRCA on the Cowboy Channel Plus for only $9.99 a month or save 25% by signing up for a full year. Visit CowboyChannelPlus.com to sign up and start streaming today. OverTheEdgeOutdoors.org, a nonprofit providing veterans and active service members with opportunities to hunt and fish at no cost to them. For more information or to donate, check out OverTheEdgeOutdoors.org. Again, that's OverTheEdgeOutdoors.org. Join the Celebration Nation. Never miss another national day. From National Pretzel Day to Junk Food Day, be notified about contests, coupons, and prize opportunities. NationalDayCalendar.com. Never miss a reason to celebrate every day. Buckstorm Hunts offering Black Hills guided rifle and archery hunts on over 1 million acres for deer and turkey and for South Dakota residents, elk and bighorn sheep too. Hunts are limited. Book a hunt today. Head to buckstormhunts.com. 
The calendar has been marked. Your aim is on point, And all that's missing is the clothes to take you to the next level. The teleoutdoors.com specializes in clothes that fit, wicks, and move silently while providing comfort and durability. The teleoutdoors.com. Welcome back to the Outdoors Radio Show, The Bend Show. I am your host, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck. And joining me, as always, is my co-host, Jeff Tigger Earhart. Now, we have a feel-good story for y'all. And this one came out this week, and maybe you've heard about it, maybe you haven't, but I thought it was a great one to share nonetheless. So, we are heading to Duluth, Minnesota, where over this last week, a 14-year-old Boy Scout named Isaac Ortman, he surpassed his goal of sleeping outside for 1,000 nights in a row. Yes, Tigger's head just snapped up. He's like, what? You heard me right. You're doing the math. Isaac Ortman, regardless of the elements, rain or shine, hot or not, even a blizzard. That's three nights. He has slept outside 1,000 nights consecutively. So that's even if he's got a cold or the the drizzles? You or, got it. Why, why did he do this? So what started out as a fun week at his family's cabin when he was an 11 year old he has continued on until now he is a 14 year old and it used to be he would come in and make a choice every night am i going to stay out there am i going to push it one more night one more night one more night well finally his dad put him to it and said you need to actually pick a number and say i'm my goal is going to be to stay outside X, Y, or Z many nights. So and was now he in a, in a tent or just on a sleeping bag on the ground? He has done it all. It sounds like during the warmer months of the year, he has spent many of the nights, he said, in a hammock in the backyard. Maybe put a tent up, yes, in case it rains, something like that. But if you're wondering right now, because we're looking outside Duluth, Minnesota, do they get snow? Absolutely, yeah, right. they, they get do. A lot of humid climate, and this has been a brutal winter to say the least. Well, what his dad and him did this year, and his dad is also a Boy Scout leader himself. Well, they decided to build a Quincy. Ever heard of a Quincy? I haven't heard of a Quincy. Well, essentially, it's a the Canadian version of an igloo. So think about this. Okay, so like when they do have the below zero, 50 below uh -huh. wind chills, he's still at 14 years old. He's, he's been out there every night. And, and to get this, the construction of a Quincy, by the way, they use snow instead of ice. And that's to aid the insulating, of course. And um, some people, they, they refer to a Quincy, another form of a snow cave as an example. Typically, construction is of softer snow piled way up high. Then they let it sit for a couple of days. So it kind of settles in. And then the digging begins. And they dig themselves a tunnel into this mound of snow. So, kind of so crazy. So, could you do that with a snow bank that, that you make from just moving all the snow in the yard mm -hmm. with a loader tractor? Yeah. I'm looking at yes. it on the little googly machine uh -huh. one more time. Uh -huh. um, they're saying this can be quite pleasant. Yes, yeah. He says it's been it's been quite all right. Although he does prefer, of course, the warmer nights versus the colder <laughs> right. nights. You know, right? And uh, Isaac Orman, according to him, he said the coldest night he slept through this far has been negative thirty eight below yikes i mean that's this kid is tough but you know how I mean, this is legit this how is all right neat. he is a star trooper in his boy scout boy scouts of america of course is what he's in and he is right now at the star trooper ranking uh but you know how neat of a thing to look back on and say you did and so is oh, he stopping yeah. now that's the question now that he hit a thousand, is so, he stopping? Is he? Well, he says, nope, not yet. He has set his new goal to last until mid-April of this coming year, so that he can say he truly slept outside for three, for three years. years. Have you? Now I know that you've slept uh, in elk camp. You've mm -hmm. stayed in some cold conditions, mm -hmm. but you have never done legitimate like winter camping, have you? Where you had the polar sleeping bag. And it was cold and, uh, and a legitimate. The reason I ask that is people say that if you have the right gear and you do that, it is some of the best sleep in your life when I, you're out on the elements. I would say actually, well, I would consider myself having slept in fairly cold temperatures because I've been elk hunting in Montana when it's been negative 10, negative 15 and camping in that type of weather. And I did sleep unbelievably hard, but I don't know if it was because of the cold or because I was so tired from the hiking That's survival in and out. Mode, <laughs> and, and, and I can say that you weren't Packing. exactly the happiest of campers because of that situation either. 
<laughs> oh, regardless, congratulations goes out to Isaac. I think that's quite the feat. That's a neat story. All right, crew, we're going to wrap things up. Thank you again to my producer and sound engineer co-host, Jeff Tigger Earhart, for joining me today. And a big thank you also to our Bend Field staffer, Heather Crowey, on sending in those news bits that I shared earlier in the day about how the new fishing and hunting records were smashed. As always, know that we sure do enjoy hearing from all parts of the country and how you're doing. So please, we invite you to call or text in your area's field reports. That number again is 305-900-BEND. Again, let me say it one more time, 305-900-2363. And you can always email us at any time. Send in your pictures as well to bendradioshow at gmail.com. If you missed part of this episode or you want to hear past shows, you can find them all on the website, thebendshow.com. And be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting apps. And as you make your plans going on through the next year here with your events, conferences, banquets, think about having Tigger and Beck entertain your crowd. We would love to come and meet with you and and share a story or two. Thank you to our partners, Ditelli Outdoors, About You Photography, Buckstorm, Little Rack, Taxidermy, Mickey's Mustard, ToxicCalls.com, Wabalo Creek Outfitters, Atlas Tracks, Abrahamson Rodeo Company, RFD TV, and The Cowboy Channel. Finally, a big thanks to all of you listeners out there that came along. And whether you're coming or going today, stay with us as we ranch it up. And remember to keep up with me back all week long by following The Bend on Facebook and on Instagram at The Bend Show. This is Rebecca Warner. Catch back if you can next week on The Bend. <laughs>